Discovery Channel. Tonight on the inside. Thousands of species roam the earth, animals unique in color, shape, and design. Bodies sculpted by nature, and only the resilient will survive. Next on Wild Discovery. far above the tree line, a Wanako has just been born. This baby doesn't know it, but its brand new body is the product of millions of years of evolutionary history. It embodies the past, written in genetic code. Bone and muscle, eye and mouth, fur and hoof, they all come from thousands of generations of slow tinkering by evolution. It's a natural process no human could match. Let's say you wanted to invent an animal. You couldn't start from scratch. You'd have to begin with an earlier model. You could make only haphazard changes until eventually a new species was born. It's a little like turning a Ford into a Lamborghini with only a hammer, a chisel, and a few hundred thousand years out in the garage. Of course, people aren't in the business of designing animal bodies. That is the business of evolution, a process that is something like an ongoing play without a script or director, a long story of life and death in a world that never stops changing. Mud skippers lead a strange existence in the swamps of Micronesia. They are fish, but they spend a lot of time out of water. 370 million years ago, a different species of fish first ventured onto land. Those ancient fish also moved around on their fins. Fins that were the first version of all vertebrate legs. land-dwelling animals probably moved like lizards do today. Their legs are placed on the side of the body and are always bent. When walking and running, the body moves in a side-to-side -side fashion, much like the way fish sway from side to side when they swim. It's a pretty effective way of getting around, except for one thing. Most lizards can't breathe well when they run. The trunk muscles that bend their bodies from side to side are the same ones they use to breathe. All land-based vertebrates inherited the same system. They use the same muscles for running and for breathing. It's a constraint in their design that dates back to the time of the fish ancestors. Obviously, lizards are plenty fast off the starting block. Their problem comes when they have to sustain high speed for any length of time. Most lizards have adapted their behavior to compensate. They run in bursts, then stop to breathe. Mammals 
did not keep this fishy way of breathing. Somewhere along the evolutionary line, two other things happened. The spine began to move up and down rather than side to side, and legs shifted under the body. The same set of trunk muscles is still used for running and for breathing. But in mammals, running actually appears to help breathing. When a mammal gallops, the movement of the back expands and contracts the chest cavity. Like a giant bellows, it pulls air into the lungs when the spine is straight, then drives it out when the spine bends. For most mammals, each running step corresponds with a breath. It's an efficient system that makes it possible for them to maintain high speeds for longer periods. Many elements shape the design of animal legs. Their environment, their diet, and their size. Smaller than a ladybug, the palmetto beetle is light as a feather. It often encounters unwanted attention from neighboring ants looking for a meal. Outnumbered and undersized, the beetle's main defense system lies in its feet. The bottoms are covered with a dense mat of bristles, 10,000 per tiny foot. Oil glands at the base lubricate the tips, helping them to stick. The palmetto beetle can cling with a force more than 200 times its own weight, much to the disappointment of potential predators. Ants are no slouches in the sticking department either. Most of them have two structures for grasping, hooks for rough terrain, and tiny adhesive sacs for smooth surfaces. When an ant takes a step, the sac in its foot inflates with liquid, which also covers the outside of the pad. The liquid provides surface tension that helps the ant hold on. And on. And on. With a force of up to 50 times its own weight. Some animals don't need a lot of help keeping their feet on the ground. Weighing up to six tons, an African elephant is the largest animal on land. Gravity plays a huge role in its life. Elephants have large straight legs set directly under their bodies, like the legs of a table. This provides structural support for their massive weight. Small mammals like hyraxes tend to have bent legs set out a bit to the side. They don't need the structural support that elephants do. But their small size makes them easy targets for predators. Bent legs are a defensive adaptation. When a quick getaway is called for, bent legs are ready to spring. Despite their different sizes and stations in life, elephants and hyraxes are remarkably similar in one area, their feet. Like many vertebrates, they have feet descended from an ancient skeletal structure. It's a five-digit design that evolved from fish fins. Today, in various forms, it's still the basis for many animal limbs, including wings. As long as humans have stood on the ground, 
we've looked up at the flight of birds with wonder and jealousy. They make it look so easy. But nature's design for flying animals is anything but simple. Airplanes need two completely different structures to get off the ground. Engines for power and wings for lift. Flying animals do it all with just a pair of wings. Fish eagles are the result of evolution's long process. They fight in the air. They mate in the air. They hunt from the air. The design of the eagle's body makes it more agile than the most advanced jet fighter. shape of an eagle's wing gives it a lift. It's rounded like an airplane wing, so air flows more rapidly over the top than the bottom. The decreased air pressure above the wing pulls the eagle up. The flight engine is powered by a pair of big chest muscles. One pulls the wing up and the other down. The tail feathers act as a rudder. And the primary feathers on the tips of the wings are individual controls, giving the bird the precise maneuverability it needs as an airborne predator. Strange as it seems to us, most animal species are designed to fly. It's such a successful way of getting around that it has evolved four different times and four unrelated kinds of animals. Extinct pterosaurs, birds, bats, and insects. Insects, the first flyers, were buzzing around long before the fish eagle's ancestors crawled out of the oceans. Today, 99% of insect species have wings. Some of the busiest flyers are bees. To make just a single tablespoon of honey, a bee needs to visit 4,000 blossoms. So, they spend a lot of time in the air. Bee flight is a combination of sheer muscle power and refined technique much like the flight of another nectar lover, the hummingbird. They have completely unrelated backgrounds, but bees and hummingbirds have a very similar lifestyle, and that's reflected in their bodies. Both rely on special muscles to power their wings rapidly. Bees beat their wings 150 times a second, using a unique flight muscle that vibrates like a twanging rubber band. It gives the bee more than one wing stroke from a single contraction. Hummingbird muscles don't vibrate, so they have to provide power for each wing stroke. It takes a lot to fuel all this activity. Hummingbirds eat two-thirds their body weight in nectar each day, but they burn it off quickly. They have the highest metabolic rate of any vertebrate, and their hearts beat a thousand times per minute. Hummingbirds and bees share a special flight technique, too. When bees hover, they turn their wings upside down during the backstroke. This lets them use the front edge of the wing twice per cycle, increasing lift. Hummingbirds also rotate their wings on the backstroke. They are the only birds to do so, and it gives them incredible control in the air. Komodo dragons scrounge wearily. Mysterious masters of survival. Wild Discovery will return after the break.
This program is brought to you in part by Juno. All the internet, half the price. Get it at Juno.com. Why does it cost so much? 20 bucks a month for internet access. That's expensive. Hey, I get complete internet access for just $9.95. Who can do that? You know Juno. Go to Juno.com. Additional phone charges may apply. Your challenge, formidable. Your strategy, sound. Your stroke, consistent and strong. Reaching any long-term goal requires stamina and commitment. The same holds true for your financial future. Talk to your advisor about Oppenheimer Funds. The right way to invest. Taco Bell's new Monterey Chicken Quesadilla. Rich Monterey Jack cheese meets spicy pepper jack. Melted together with all white meat chicken. For a taste so tempting, it might trigger a Monterey matchup. Try the new Monterey Chicken Quesadilla. Moments ago, we gave Frank an ordinary sugar-free gum. And this is a pretty girl. Oh, my. Now, sugar-free orbit. Fabulous. Orbit cleans another dirty mouth. That's why four out of these five construction workers prefer the good, clean feeling of orbit, no matter what. Now there's a better way to soothe your skin after shaving. Nivea for Men Aftershave Balm has advanced moisturizers and vitamins to soothe and improve your skin. Nivea for Men. More evolved skin care. What if the new Kia Sorento was in a race against the other SUVs? Who would win? The little ones would be left in the dust. Some just too honking huge. Others would be afraid of getting dirty. And the rest, they'd be distracted by the wads of cash we see. The midsize Sorento with a 10-year warranty won this unbiased race. After all, it is our commercial. Right now, get 0% financing on the new Kia Sorento. Be there for the construction of one of the world's last true mysteries, building the Great Pyramid. Sunday, March 2nd at 9 Eastern and Pacific, only on the Discovery Channel. It's time for fun, fun, fun on Discovery Kids. <laughs> Join the party on Discovery Kids. Everybody else is. Every day on the Discovery Kids channel and Saturday mornings on NBC. Do you want to make more money? Here's a fact. You can earn over $50,000 a year in home inspection, remodeling, carpentry, and other building trades. So find out how easy it can be to train at home for these careers with Education Direct. Just call this toll-free number. At Education Direct, more than 12 million men and women have trained for job promotions and new careers without ever setting foot inside a classroom. And now at home, in your spare time, you can get your career diploma or even your specialized associate degree. Choose from any one of these courses. Home inspector, electrician, appliance repair, home remodeling and repair, auto mechanic, high school, PC repair, motorcycle repair, private investigator, HVAC technician, locksmith, small engine repair, TV VCR repair, plumber, carpenter, or get your specialized associate degree. You can major in business management or accounting. Call now for free information. Call 1-800-320-8648. There is no obligation. That's 1-800-320-8648. Call now. What really happened in Dallas back in 1963? We're focusing in on the famous film for a never-before-seen 360-degree look at what really happened on the grassy knoll. Zoom in on the truth. Unsolved History, Wednesday at 9 on the Discovery Channel. Exoskeleton, a 
or a baby chick's downy fluff. Every animal has an external surface that literally defines its body. It's the first line of defense against the outside world. Covering a body is a serious design challenge. There must be allowances for growth, for heating and cooling, for keeping water in and the elements out. For many animals, the challenge is met by a versatile group of proteins called keratins. Fur, feathers, horns, scales, and beaks, all are made of keratins. The range of form and function in this one group of materials is enormous. It's also a key to the success of animal life. of the Arctic Circle, the temperature can drop to 34 degrees below zero. Protection from the cold and damp is crucial for a polar bear. inches of blubber keeps the bear warm while swimming, and a two-inch thick fur coat insulates and repels water. Even the soles of their feet are covered with fur. The thick underhairs are white, while the outer guard hairs are clear and hollow. These act like tiny fiber optics, transmitting solar energy to the bear's skin, which is black, to better absorb heat. The bear's white fur also makes for excellent camouflage, a trait they have in common with other northern animals. Arctic fox shares the polar bear's habitat, but without the benefit of warm blubber. So the fox's fur has the highest insulating capability on Earth. Insulation is key for both bears and foxes. Like all mammals, they maintain a body temperature around 98.6 Fahrenheit. Their skin and fur is primarily designed to keep this warmth in. All mammal coats have the same heat-preserving function. For polar bears, the system sometimes works almost too well. They are so insulated that they tend to overheat, even on Arctic ice. Reptiles have the opposite problem, which is one reason why they don't hang around the Arctic. More than 10 feet long, the Komodo dragon is a fearsome predator and the largest lizard in the world. It lives on hot, dry islands in the South Pacific. Like all reptiles, the Komodo dragon cannot heat itself. Instead, it relies on the sun for warming and shade for cooling down. This system places it at the mercy of the environment, but frees it in another way. Since reptiles don't generate their own body warmth, they don't need large amounts of food to fuel internal heat factories. This female has been guarding her eggs for four months. During that time, she has had nothing to eat. Very few mammals could survive such prolonged starvation, but most reptiles can. 
Many reptiles can also go without water for long periods. In the deserts of the American Southwest, temperatures regularly exceed 100 degrees, and rain is rare. Yet rattlesnakes, like all animals, are about 65% water. They thrive in desert conditions thanks in large part to their scaly skin. Like fur and feathers, reptile scales also contain keratin. Here it combines with a waxy material that prevents water loss. In the story of evolution, the development of reptiles' waterproof skin was an early and vital chapter. Millions of years ago, amphibians were the first vertebrates to venture out of the seas. But they never made it far from their watery home because of their skin. Most amphibians have lungs, but they also get oxygen directly through their skin, which must be moist all the time. As long as the earth was warm and wet, this wasn't a problem. In fact, amphibians were the dominant land animals for 75 million years. Some grew up to 15 feet long, but they could only go so far. When the earth began to dry out, the amphibian's habitat began to shrink. But in the meantime, the reptile skin had evolved so that it was no longer permeable. This made it possible for animal life to venture into uncharted territory, changing the course of evolutionary history. Today, evolutionary history is being made by a different group of animals, which also owes a great deal of its success to its coverings. Insects, crabs, and lobsters have external skeletons, all containing a tough but pliable material called chitin. It's changeable stuff. Chitin is the material for the microscopic scales of a butterfly's wing, the body of a dragonfly, the legs of a grasshopper, the skin of a caterpillar, the shell of a crab. It is one of the most abundant materials in the biological world. Having a skeleton on the outside can be very useful. A tiny animal is mostly surface, and that can cause problems. It's too easy to become dried out. An exoskeleton keeps water and vital fluids from evaporating out of a body. It also provides protection. Still, there are limits to what an exoskeleton can do. For one thing, it has to stay small. If an insect grew much bigger, its exoskeleton would collapse under its own weight. Crabs and lobsters have managed to get a little bigger, but that's because they live in water which helps support their weight. Insects may be small, but they're tough. They thrive in all corners of the globe, despite their size limitations. A million species have been described, and scientists estimate that millions more are yet to be discovered. In fact, there are 300 pounds of insects for every pound of human on Earth. People may think that humans are the dominant species, but perhaps these bodies are the shape of things to come.
natural armor or a lethal warning, beautiful covering is often a deadly weapon in disguise. On an all new episode of Monster Garage, Jesse James and crew get their hands on a sweet Mini Cooper. Are we going to really destroy this guy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> seven days to turn it into a monster style snowmobile. You know, I'm just going to go As the king himself, Richard Petty challenges Jesse to a race. He'll need more than a monster to beat me. Don't miss our snowy showdown on Monster Garage. Monday at 8 Eastern and Pacific, only on the Discovery Channel. There's a place I dream about Where the sun never goes out Accenture Innovation Delivered. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, I'm still in the car. Ten minutes, an hour, I've got no idea. <sighs> This is ridiculous. Can't wait to get your new Jetta? With offers like this, why would you? Uh, what's this? Breakfast. That's kind of early, buddy. You guys need to take some cholesterol off of you. Honey, have you been reading the Cheerios box again? I got that off the box. Cheerios is still the only leading cold cereal clinically proven to reduce cholesterol to help your heart. That was very thoughtful of you. Very early, but very thoughtful. Mm. Cheerios, good for the heart. Do you know who I am? How about me? Or me? I'm a gymnast. I'm a point guard and an honor student. I'm going to be a pediatrician. Research proves that girls who participate in sports are more likely to be successful in life. The Women's Sports Foundation provides programs, grants, and scholarships so all women can excel, no matter what the field. So if you don't know who I am, you will. Get to know the Women's Sports Foundation. Waterproof, lightweight, and beautiful. All this from the same material that makes fur, scales, and horns. In fact, feathers are direct descendants of reptile scales. A feather grows from the base up. Each one has thousands of tiny branches, which are all connected by tiny hooks. The hooks have to keep the feather in alignment, like a zipper. A single feather can have more than a million tiny parts. Feathers, as we all know, have color. But they get different colors from different sources. Browns, blacks, and grays all come from melanin, a pigment manufactured by nearly every living being on the planet. Red is more complicated. Scarlet ibises, for example, can't make red on their own. Red is a pigment that only plants can create. 
For a scarlet ibis to stay bright, it literally needs to eat its carrots or some other food with pigment in it. Animal colors have lots of different functions. They camouflage, they advertise, and they serve as a warning. Monarch butterflies hardly fade into the woodwork, especially when they travel in groups of thousands. But they don't have much to fear from predators. In fact, their markings are a clear warning to stay away. Monarchs taste bad, and they're poisonous. Any predator that survived eating one would think twice before nabbing another. Bold combinations of patterns and colors are a universal warning throughout nature. They send clear signals to potential predators to stay away, or prepare to suffer the consequences. Mantis shrimp are among the most brilliantly colored animals. They're also the bullies of the coral reef. Some of them have smashing claws that can carry the force of a 22 caliber bullet. They are among the most aggressive predators on Earth. They also fight among themselves, a lot. And if you're going to fight a lot, you have to be able to see what's coming. Scientists speculate that the mantis shrimp's aggressive lifestyle has driven the evolution of the most complex color vision system known. Their eyes do the intelligence gathering for a crustacean arms race. Mantis shrimp, like most other crustaceans and insects, have compound eyes made up of thousands of individual units, each with its own lens. In mantis shrimp, these tiny units are specialized for color vision. Some units in the center band have unique tinted plugs that filter light. They work like colored glasses do to change the way the world looks. Behind the tinted plugs, there are 10 different kinds of molecules that recognize various colors. Humans have these molecules too, but we only have three kinds instead of 10. What do mantis shrimp do with all this color vision? No one knows for sure. It may help them to recognize one another or to hunt better in a colorful coral reef. They probably need complex eyes because they don't have much of a brain. Their eyes sort out information, helping the simple brain to make sense of what they see. The evolutionary tale opened millions of years ago when life began taking shape in the seas. The earliest eyes just distinguished light from dark, which was enough to help an animal know if it was swimming up toward the surface or down to the bottom. As eyes evolved, their structures for catching light changed depending on the needs of the owner. Some eyes see well in dark, others only in black and white. Some can see in ultraviolet, others far into the distance. For vertebrates, much of what they see depends on how their brain analyzes the information their eyes collect. Monkeys and apes have eyes much like our own. And like us, they have well-developed brains that further analyze the information the eyes receive. 
And that's a good thing, because an orangutan's life depends on how well it sees. Orangutans spend most of their time high in the trees, sometimes a hundred feet above the forest floor. They must be able to judge distances well. One slip could be fatal. One aspect of their eyes is critical in judging distances. They're positioned toward the front of the head, so they share the same visual field, giving excellent depth perception. Eye placement has a significant effect on how an animal sees the world. Sometimes you can tell where an animal is in the food chain simply by looking at the eyes. With a predator, it's a good bet the eyes are closer together. With prey, they're probably farther apart. Eyes toward the front of the head give better depth perception. Eyes that are far apart give a wider field of view. and holding the explosive cheetah. Next on Wild Discovery. We often think that diet only affects the waistline. But for all creatures, what, where, and how they eat determines the structure of their mouth, and sometimes the rest of their body as well. Take fish, for example. They have a constant dilemma. When fish move too close to prey, waves from their movement push the target away. So, how do they capture and eat food underwater without making waves? Fish don't have arms or legs. They have only their mouths to catch and hold on to food. Fortunately for most fish, their mouths are made for suction. The largemouth bass is a fisherman's dream catch. And it's a pretty effective predator itself. bass lunge at prey, their gills close and the outer jaws expand. Bones in the base of the mouth push down to create suction, which pulls in lots of water and the prey. Inside the mouth is a second set of jaws that clamp down on the catch, holding it while the gills open to let the water out. The whole setup includes more than 20 moving bones and 30 muscles for the jaws alone. But there's one thing that fish don't have. A tongue. Chameleons have one of the most impressive tongues in the animal kingdom. It's what they need to hunt a fast-moving target in a complex environment. Chameleons can't keep up with flying insects. And if they move too close, the target will just fly away. So chameleons quietly keep their distance and let their tongue do the work. It all happens in a few milliseconds. A powerful accelerator muscle squeezes and the tongue shoots out like a cannonball, nearly twice the length of the chameleon's body. The base of the tongue is anchored by a pair of retractor muscles that reel it back in with the prey. Here's the last thing the victim sees. A fleshy, sticky tongue that envelops it on impact. An electron micrograph shows the thousands of sticky flaps that coat the tongue, helping the chameleon keep a grip on dinner. 
It's a highly evolved mechanism, and it gives the chameleon a success rate that's better than 90%. cheetah, famed for its speed on foot, is just as dependent on its mouth for success. Like all big cats, cheetahs have a lethal bite. Their short skulls and strong jaw muscles act as a powerful lever system. They use it to crush the victim's windpipe. It takes five minutes of continuous pressure to kill a gazelle. Killing the prey is only the first challenge. Then they have to find a way to eat it. Gazelles have tough, thick skin. The only tool cheetahs have is their teeth. They have specialized cheek teeth with sharp serrated edges, which are precisely aligned like scissors to shear flesh. The exact fit of these teeth is so crucial that the lower jaw is locked securely into a straight up and down motion. Most meat-eating mammals have similar teeth and jaw configurations, especially designed for slicing flesh. Fungus-eating ants restore the environment and fatten up their next meal. Wild Discovery will return after the break. What an animal eats certainly affects the way its mouth develops. But the ramifications don't stop at the jawline. Bison are North America's largest herbivores and among the largest animals on Earth. Over eons, their bodies have evolved to make the most of another North American landmark, the Great Plains and their abundant grasses. But these grasses aren't very nutritious, a fact that has set off a peculiar evolutionary chain of events. Bison are big. A male can literally weigh a ton. But since the grass that he eats is of poor quality, he needs to eat a lot of it. Imagine a 250-pound man subsisting only on celery. So bison spend most of their day chewing. They've developed massive jaw muscles, making the head very heavy. It's hard to hold such a heavy head up so bison have a special elastic ligament that helps. It's anchored to the upper part of the bison's spine, which is high and strong to support the weight of the muscles in the head. The entire arrangement acts as a cantilever, proving useful in deep snow. Bison are able to get to food many other animals can't uncover. They're opportunistic grazers, meaning that they'll eat most any grass that grows. A bison can handle it because of its enormous stomach. In a male, the stomach alone can weigh 300 pounds. It allows the bison to eat food that other animals couldn't digest. Several thousand miles to the south, the environment is quite different, and so are the dominant herbivores. In fact, a primary job in the rainforest ecosystem is held by a pair of tiny appendages, or rather a few hundred million pairs of tiny appendages. Leaf cutter ants don't actually eat the leaves they take. Instead, they carry them back to underground nests to feed a special fungus that they do eat. What looks like devastation is actually recycling. 
Rainforest soil is notoriously poor. Leafcutter ants return important nutrients to the earth. In essence, they spend their lives making compost. Most ants are carnivores, not herbivores, but leafcutters have evolved to make good use of their particular ecological niche. Their cutting mandibles are bigger than most other ants, and so are their heads, to support massive jaw muscles. Meanwhile, their abdomens vibrate while cutting, in effect, helping their entire bodies function like electric shears. Together, these tiny creatures manage to recycle up to 20% of the fresh vegetation in the rainforest every year. As the earth changes, animals continue to shape and be shaped by the world around them. The ability to adapt in ants, in eagles, in wanakos is a constant theme in the never-ending story of evolution. New species develop, old ones change or disappear forever. Evolution may appear to be a long haphazard series of accidents, but every body created by nature is in its own way a masterpiece of design and a blueprint for the future. Stay tuned as Wild Discovery returns to take you into the world of the legendary Komodo dragon, coming up next. And for more up-close animal adventures online, just log on to discovery.com. <laughs>